Hi guys, Abs here and welcome to this video. So in this video, I'm going to be making notes and showing you why it's so important to make sure that we group and cluster our keywords together to make sure that we're getting the best possible results. So a few days ago, we released this brand new tool. It's free of charge um, and it allows you to cluster your keywords and it uses advanced natural language processing techniques to understand the semantic meaning of your keywords. There's nothing to pay for this. You can use it as many times as you like and you get three algorithms to work with. So anyway, I'm gonna explain why it's so important that you run your keywords through a tool like this before you go out to target them. So I've come over to this website down here and what it does, it allows me to find long tail keywords, related keywords, suggestions um, with search volume and keyword difficulty um, for the keywords that I enter. So as you can see, I entered in the keyword belly fat. I've got a nice list down here. Um, now I've actually downloaded this list. No, I haven't. Yes, I have. Okay. And this is the list here. Okay. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to explain exactly what's going on. So if you have a look at this list down here, what you can see is you've got keywords like how can I lose belly fat and the average monthly search volume is like, I don't know, you know, whatever it is down here. Okay. And underneath it, you've got how do I how do you lose belly fat? Then you've got how to lose abdominal fat, how to lose belly fat, how can you lose belly fat, how to lose belly fat on your belly. So as you can see, many of these are very, very, very similar. And it would be silly of us to go out there and create a brand new blog post um, targeting different terms like this just because they have massive search volume. Some of them you might even find are plural words and some of them are singular words. Okay, so it makes sense that you need to group them. A lot of the time what happens is when we come and use websites like this and we have access to like, for example, 34,000 keywords all having search volume, it's very difficult for us to know how to group these. And this is where we'll be using a tool like this. So what I've done here is I've actually gone ahead, I'm going to do it in front of you now. I'm going to go and group these and I'm going to show you some of the things that we can do with keyword clusters. Okay, so inside of this folder here, I'm going to go ahead in this, no I'm not, I'm going to go over to another folder. Okay, inside of here, I'm going to go ahead and add all these keywords down here. Okay, we've got 1001 keywords down here. I'm going to save this over I'm gonna make sure I haven't got anything else open okay and I'm gonna go ahead and click I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in here first and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on start clustering and for this one I'm using max cluster size 5 and I'm using the very first algorithm this actually has three algorithms to work with we'll continue with the first one but I'll show you how this makes a difference here Okay, so I'm going to go over to keyword clusters.txt and now we can see our clusters down here. So we can see how to get rid of belly fat is now grouping all of these keywords and saying, you know what? Well, keyword cluster telling me here by me looking at this here is that this is what my blog post is going to be about. And inside of this blog post, I'm going to be able to target all of these keywords here. And now we can easily use AI to create these um, articles for us and make sure it includes all variations inside of them as well. Okay, so this is really, really cool because what this has done, if I open up the CSV file, because Keyword Clusters also gives us a CSV file um, here, what we'll notice is on the very first um, row down here, we have all of our main keywords that we're going to be creating content for. And the ones along here, they're going to be our clusters inside of them. So now we've got something like 291 um, blog posts that we're going to be creating that are actually going to be targeting 1000 different keywords. And obviously we know already from the get go that these keywords have monthly search volume associated with them. Okay. And there's one more thing that I wanted to show you really, really quickly. And that is inside of keyword clusters. Let me just go ahead and close this file because it's not going to be able to overwrite them. Okay, inside of keyword clusters itself, if we know that we have plenty of keywords that are highly related to each other, so we can see down here, we got lots and lots of keywords that are going to be related to each other um, based on the semantic meaning, then what we can do is we can actually increase the cluster size. So what, see what happens if I use exactly the same file, but this time I increase the cluster size to 20. I'm going to go ahead and click on start clustering, and that's been completed there. I'm going to open up this file and you'll see exactly what we've got down here now. You can see our cluster sizes are much larger now. Okay, so how to reduce belly fat, we now have something like, I don't know, 27 different keywords that would go inside of that article. So this is really, really cool, guys, because we already know 
depending on where we're getting our keywords from. If these are related, if these are similar, if these are question based or what they are. And we also know that plurals and singular terms and things like how can I lose belly fat and how do you lose belly fat are almost identical in meaning other than you and I. Um, and we can group them together. OK, um, and this is very difficult to do when you've got a massive list of keywords. And this is why tools like Keyword Cluster are really, really advantage, uh, advantageous to actually use. OK, there's one more thing that I want to show you as well, guys, is if you're not using tools like this, then how can you get a large list of keywords and find out the monthly search volume for them and then group them together with tools like keyword clusters? OK, so I've actually I'm actually going to take you over to a couple of websites that you might have heard of. You might not have used as well. Um, and I'm just going to give you some examples so you can use things like answer the public Answer the public actually has recently been take taken over by Neil Patel. Um, and I haven't used it in a long time. But as you can see, there's some limitations and restrictions. But when you come over and look at the pricings, he does have some lifetime deals as well. OK, so this is really cool because this actually gives you the monthly search volume um, data included with them. OK, I don't personally use it myself, guys. Um, I'm just making notes of how you can get big lists of keywords. OK, the second one is something like Suval, um, Suval .com, um, And with this, it gets you Google suggestions and it will query all of these here. So, for example, if I do something like SEO, as you can see, it gets me all of the queries from these places here. And if I do something like a for example, a SEO, then as you can see, it's going to give me things like, you know, whatever starts with a SEO, then it starts with B SEO. So you could actually do this uh, with swivel.com yourself. Um, the third tool that I'm going to show you is a tool that you can use free of charges on our website. There's one thing that I will mention to you guys. Obviously, it uses your own connection and it queries Google with your own Internet. However, you're using it from our website. OK, and the way you work with this is you add your keyword in here. So, for example, belly fat. OK, and you can have a look at the advanced options here. These advanced options allows you to select what engine you want to actually scrape the suggestions from. So it does suggestions and it allows you to add prefixes and suffixes as well. OK, and it allows you to let it to continually continuously run. And if you want to use a dis uh, a, a, a search location of your choice, so for example, USA or wherever it is, then you can add them down here um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on suggest keywords and what you'll notice it makes a number of queries down here. OK, all queued up and it continuously adds them up, guys. OK, so you can stop this whenever you want and you can continue with it however you want. And if you scroll down here, you can see I'll actually show uh, well, we'll leave it on here for now. We'll let it gather a list for us down here. OK, so I'll let this continue for a few seconds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you how we can take this list of keywords and then how we can go ahead and get the search volume for these um, and how we can sort these because there's a lot of the keywords are just not going to make a lot of meaning um, to us. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and click on stop for now. OK, and what I'm going to do now is now I'm going to click on export and I'm going to click on copy keywords. This is actually going to download a file for me. I'm going to open this keyword list for you and we're going to go through this and then I'm going to show you what happens. OK, so from that quick run that we've done, I didn't put it on pause or anything like that, guys, but we managed to get 604 keywords or keyword suggestions. A lot of these are going to have some clutter in there and some fluff that's just not going to make sense. So, for example, a big fat belly. Oh, no, it does make sense. OK, is a fat belly hard? OK, so some of them, the majority of them do make sense, but there's going to be a number of, number of them that don't make sense. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight this column and I'm going to go ahead and go over to the data tab inside of Excel and I'm going to click here to make sure we've got no duplicates. OK, and as you can see, 68 duplicates were removed and we've got 536 unique values. So what I'm going to do now is now I'm going to go ahead and add a cell inside of here. So I'm going to go insert and I'm going to call these keywords. OK, and now I'm going to save this over. I'm going to go ahead and click on save. OK, and this is called keyword research bulk, whatever, whatever, whatever. And if I go over here, I can see what the name is. It's got the one inside of it. And now I'm going to go over to the Google Keyword Planner and inside of the Google Keyword Planner, I'm going to go over to tools and I'm going to go over to um, the planning section here. OK, and I'm going to go over to Keyword Planner. And when I'm in Keyword Planner, when it opens up, I'm going to go over to get search volume and forecasts. And from here, I'm going to upload that file and I'm going to select that file from here. And where was that file? It had the one after it. Here we go. OK, and I'm going to click on open. And now I'm going to click on submit. OK, we're going to give it a couple of seconds and Google's going to organize everything for us. And it's saying there was no header found. 
Okay, so that's not working there. So I'm just going to get these and I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them inside of Google um, Keyword Planner. So I'm going to go from the top. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom down here and I'm going to come inside of here and I'm going to paste them. Okay, so that's all the keywords there and I'm going to click on get started. Oops, it's got one known error. Let's have a look. Okay, this is more than 10 words. Okay, so unfortunately, if it's more than 10 words, it's not going to allow me to um, add that in there. So I'm going to remove that keyword and click on get started. And what's happening now is now this has gone ahead and it's going to give me the search volume for all of the keywords. So what I want to do, a lot of them, I'm going to show you now. You can see, um, for example, a girl belly fat, um, a workout belly fat, a um, a ABS versus belly fat. So a lot of them just aren't going to make sense. So how do we ignore this? So I'm going to go ahead and sort this by highest to lowest. And then I'm going to go ahead and download these. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, download as CSV. I think I've got the wrong one, haven't I? Um, let me just double check this one. I have. I've downloaded the wrong one, guys. I'm sorry. Let me just go ahead and download the right one. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and download. Oops, we're going to go ahead and download this one here. Plan historical metrics. OK, and once it's downloaded, we're going to go ahead and open it. And once it's opened. That's not the one, is it? Here it is. OK, once it's open, what we need to do is we need to have a look at this one here. This is the average monthly search volume. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everything here. OK, um, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything there. So this is the average monthly search volume. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually delete everything after here because I don't care about any of this stuff here right now. I'm going to go ahead and sort this from highest or largest to smallest. And now we have all of the keywords that actually matter and have monthly search volume associated with them um, up to, let's have a look. I'm going to continue to go down. Up to here. OK, so we know that the keyword suggestions that we got um, are now good up to here. They all have monthly search volume associated with them. We can now take these, um, add them to keyword clusters um, and then cluster these keywords and sort them. And then we know exactly what kind of keywords um, are semantically related or um, have the same kind of semantic meaning. And we can cluster them together and then we can go out there and target it that way. So anyway, guys, you can access this tool here if you wanted to work with it at abbasravji.com forward slash keyword hyphen research. Obviously, answer the public. You guys probably know the URL for this. You've also got suvel.com, which is S-O-O-V-L-E.com. And for um, keyword clusters, um, then you can actually get this from um, abbasravji.com forward slash keyword slash um, clusters. OK, and as you can see down here, you just enter your name and email and we will email the link to you and it's free of charge to use. Um, it's a very advanced technique that I use as well, guys. You can play around with the maximum cluster sizes. You can play around with the different algorithms as well. And the cool thing about this is that you can use it as many times as you like without any charge whatsoever. So anyway, thank you very much. And I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you understand why it's so important to use tools like keyword clusters uh, when you, and cluster your um, keywords before you go out there um, and start to create these blog posts. I mean, the last thing that you want to do is to start competing against yourselves. You don't. And the last thing you want to do is start creating content that isn't covering the entire topic because you're breaking down everything into different different articles and keyword clusters allows you to group it all together to create authoritative pieces of content and really become the authority in your niche and to make sure that you don't get you know you don't start competing against yourself and getting in trouble for keyword cannibalization so thank you very much and i hope you enjoy this video